Okay, 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 cut it. I could not sing that song, but for anybody who came here and was like, oh, she didn't do reciprocate, she didn't do circuit, she didn't do session 33, I didn't do a lot of songs um, from the new album. I want you to know that, you know, this is real. Like, I write a lot of my stuff, I write most of my stuff. And, you know, it's still a fresh wound. My baby, she's not even one yet. And I ain't got time to be up here singing that right in front of y'all. So I sang what I could. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Omega. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Omega Classic Records is the page and the name. Omega, none rhymes greater. Guaranteed. Stay tuned and listen to this. So, I'm coming at you to talk to you today about an artist by the name of Summer Walker. I'm sure you just heard that clip, right? Crazy. So, basically, to just summate that clip really quick, Summer Walker is in the middle of a show. Um, she stops the music, tells everybody, hey, you know, uh, I don't want to perform these songs, regardless of y'all coming to see me to hear these songs, which are hits. Um, I'm not going to do them. Um, the shit really still hurts. It has a sting to it. And I'm just not going to do them. I'm not going to be up here in front of y'all uh, doing this for y'all. You know, whatever. You know, it was it was like a rude delivery wrapped inside of a rude, you know, performance uh, sprinkled with uh, shitball droplets, if I have to be frank, you know. Um, just imagine the people that paid for their tickets to, to come there and see uh, that song. Uh, pull her up. Imagine the people that came to see her and pay specifically to hear those couple songs, okay? Because you got yourself an artist here who is under-established. She's got one album out, two albums out, I believe. And so that means that there aren't many hits in circulation, I'm sure. You know, generally, depending on the artist album and impact, uh hit records are one to two, one to three, excuse me, per project, unless that artist was just, you know, if you got yourself a 50 cent situation, you got in the club, um, Wangsta, Mini Men, um, I feel like I'm missing another hit, 50 Drop, and that was a very strong album, it was a groundbreaking album, you know, it, it, not every artist puts out an album where it has three choice singles that are just mm, 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 like bodying, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's a rarity in itself. So you probably are definitely there at this show to hear these songs that she doesn't want to perform, all right? Um, I want to speak on that a little bit and say that, you know what, people buy tickets to see these elements, uh, a great performance, uh, great showmanship, um, to hear the songs that they've been writing and listening to in their radios that just repeat over and over again on their way to work and on their way home from work and on their recreational drives. People are coming to the show to hear these songs that they have invested in They've invested some people uh, money even by purchasing the song outright uh, so that it's uh, downloaded into their phones. Some people uh, have it on a plan and on a platform of their choice and they just have it where they can put it on a playlist and repeatedly stream it over and over again, which is an investment as well because that helps the artist. I think uh, a record sale constitutes, uh, I want to say somewhere around between a thousand and twelve hundred streams. If I'm not mistaken, check me on that because I'm not uh, saying that that's 100 percent, but it's something around that area. So, you know, um, these people have 
been riding and living with your single and since whenever you dropped it and came out with it and they're excited to buy a ticket and come to your show and then they're met with a train wreck. A young girl who unprofessionally stops the show mid-show, um, you know, states that she's, you know, in pain by the music that you're lis listening to right now and she's not about to stand up here and do this for y'all, I think was her words toward the end of that segment. Um, I'm not about to stand up here and do this for y'all. Like she might as well have been like, fuck y'all, basically. I mean, it was all in her tone, in her tone and uh, choice of words in her, you know, in her whole delivery. So she might as well have been like, I'm not gonna stand up here and do this for y'all, fuck y'all. She might as well, you know what I mean? So, um, and it's funny because her first album, I think is called Over It. And then the second album is called Still Over It. Looks like you ain't over a motherfucking thing. <laughs> you know, um, if I, you know, uh, look at the performance and the way that you handled that and uh, looks like you still struggling. So um, sounds like some title changes are in order. Uh, but nonetheless, um, it's unfortunate um, to see that kind of unprofessionalism. But in today's artist um their existence is so short-lived you know they're they're so carbon copy and they're so manufactured um you know it's almost like a like a general motors assembly plant you know a, a metal fabrication plant these artists are just getting stamped out like gingerbread cookies you know one by one you might have you know, one with a green bow tie and one with a red bow tie. Just right on down the line. It reminds me of that episode, I Love Lucy. You know, and, and the, the little chocolate balls is just coming out one by one. And one that she gets to the point where she can't keep up with them. They just rolling off the... Kind of kind of like how these artists are today, you know. Um, I'll say this. We all are grappling with heartache and pains of all kinds. We all are dealing with life as we take it and as we can roll through the punches, but we all are not artists that are stars that have a responsibility to deliver to people who paid to share the night with us or paid for our product. Uh, I, on the other hand, am one of those stars, future star, uh, in my current mind and track record, a star right now. And um, I have never done people that way. I have done over a hundred shows under my belt. I have never stopped mid show, uh, to say that, uh, this song is disturbing to me still. And, uh, I will not perform it for y'all tonight. That's the whole reason for making the music is to release the stress, the tension, uh, is to release the, the issue itself uh, somewhat off of my chest. Um, the music is the tool, it's the therapy. But today's artists are a little more fragile. They're a little more um, infantile. They're a little more embryotic. Um, and, you know, up, stay, up, up on stage, she hits them with that, you know, hood girl thought like, you know, presence and all of that extra shit that comes, you know, with that attitude and the way she feeling. Like, I would have asked for my money back if I had bought that ticket. I would have went to the box office and been like, hey, you know, I don't know what's up with that, but I want my money back. And I would have tapped about five people on the shoulder on the way out the door. Like, man, man, this is bullshit. And tried to rally up me a couple folks on the way out. My whole party, whoever I came with, we all going together to get our money back at the box office, out the gate. And and you see a group of people doing something like that in a large function. It, it's the likelihood of others following is, is strong. All right. So, uh, which all of that is how she chose to play it. But that brings me to the back office of Summer Walker. Uh, Summer Walker was signed sometime, I want to say, between 2017 and then she surfaces in 2019. Uh, she's actually signed to a label, 
uh, called LVRN, and she's also signed to Interscope. So there, there's a joint venture here between LVRN, which I think is uh, Love Renaissance, if I'm not mistaken, and Interscope Records. And we all know about Interscope Records and um, their history with uh, how they have gouged uh, a lot of artists to come their way um, and how they, uh, Interscope was built on black music. You know, Interscope comes into the game, if you don't know, with very eccentric acts. It's the label that brings on, that takes on all of the the groundbreaking acts, but they weren't groundbreaking uh, in that period. They weren't even thought about as groundbreaking. They were just like obscene or just very, uh, just strikingly um, different. Uh, eccentric is the best word I can use. Uh, acts like Marilyn Manson, um, Tupac Shakur, and that's before, that's pre-Death Row. Uh, acts like... Um, um, what's that one guy? Uh, I can't think of his name, but he, he, uh, he, he has a rock group and he does his entire, uh, he does everything. He, he damn near does all the, he writes all the music and then he'll fire a motherfucker just as quick as he, they'll put his name in here somewhere, hopefully like right over here, uh, the name of him in the group. Um, so Interscope is known to have these very eccentric acts and whatnot, and in the past, uh, have ripped the folks off, you know, quite significantly. Look it up. So she signed in this joint venture deal situation with LVRN and Interscope. And she signed in a deal that appears to be just grossly uh, out of her favor. Like, I mean, she's literally getting bent over, you know, she might as well be literally getting bent over, you know. Um, so, you know, the, the, the little dude she got a problem with that ain't, uh, left her heart and she didn't came out with over it and still over it and then still can't perform the labels fucking her worse than he did. Just being honest about it. And it's terrible. Um, I'll give you a piece. Uh, this is, uh, from the Rolling Stones, uh, who, released this article sometime around November of 2021. Um, and she comes out very strong with two singles, uh, single playing games that has a sample from uh, Destiny's Child's Say My Name. And then one song that I personally really like, um, the You Make Me Wanna, which is a play on uh, Usher's You Make Me Wanna. Um, or no, hers is called Come Through, excuse me, which is a play on Usher's You Make Me Wanna. Uh, I really, really liked that song. I liked it immediately. I was a big fan of Usher's uh, You Make Me Wanna when it came out, and I've been an Usher fan for years. Uh, so I really liked her rendition uh, of that. Uh, but uh, back to the point that I'm making here, because you got yourself an artist uh, who is claiming heartbreak, but I'm willing to bet there's more. I'm willing to bet that there's some disgruntlement behind that curtain, all right? So, uh, this success seems to have occurred while Walker was locked into a lopsided record deal. According to 2017's versions of the singer's agreement with the label slash management company, stop, LVRN is not only the record label, but the management company as well. So they're managing her career and they're also her record label. That in itself is a conflict of interest. That's like saying, um, you know what? I'm going to play for team Nike and uh, my doctors, should I get injured, are team Nike. So, you know, the strongest interest is playing on the team. So you hurt yourself and you go see the doctor who is also team Nike. Well, I mean, he's gonna want you to play and he's gonna do whatever you know he sees fit to get you back out there and playing. And in some cases, it may be against your best interest. You may still have this injury that's too severe and he may lie to you about it. That's why you don't have record labels 
be your record label and your manager. Big, big red flag on all kind of levels. Um, one draft of the document obtained by Rolling Stones would demand that Walker give up a chunk of her non-musical earnings, even in areas like acting. Woo! So what I am accustomed to is 360 deals that do take uh, performance, music, music itself, uh, and that that's um, aligned with performance and merchandise. But these folks, if should she decide to go off and act, they're going to take a lump sum of her acting revenue as well. Wow. First time ever seeing that. All right. The recording deal she ultimately signed with LVRN offered the single a low advance payment and a low royalty rate by current industry standards. What's more, at least according to one draft document, the singer would have been incentivized to be managed by LVRN, even though the company may have had, <clears throat> may have had a conflict of interest, like I just said, serving as both management and label. The deal gave Walker little flexibility. She's effectively an indentured servant for a series of albums. Wow, indentured servant. That means she is an indentured servitude. Do you know what an indentured servant is? Okay. Um, it's slavery. <laughs> All right. Go look it up. Matter of fact, uh, indentured servitude comes from the European uh, old times uh, before really the Atlantic slave trade began to take place. Indentured servitude is why people left Europe with the government of kings and, and Catholics uh, in the first place. They were peasants and they were getting robbed daily by the king. And you better not say nothing. And that's basically indentured servitude. Um, wow. While LVRN faced little risk, they're getting a lot without having to give her much, says Peter Schoolage, a tech and entertainment lawyer and one of multiple attorneys who reviewed a draft of Summer Walker's deal. For many artists, lopsided deals are the norm. If you compare the music industry to the industries with creative products, you'll notice that this is the industry where creators get paid the least, says Jordan Bromley, partner and entertainment group leader at the firm, Manhattan, Phelps and Phillips. Sounds like he's an attorney too. Well, not an attorney, but I uh, just said what he is. He's a partner. Oh, I just said he's a partner. So he's probably an attorney. Um, that's partially why artists complain about their labels and deals on social media so much and it's such a frequent occurrence and then this article goes on to give meek mill as an example from a complaint that he put up uh in october 25th about his record label but we'll pass that i want to get you guys this one piece that just is jaw dropping out of this article that i had to stop right there um okay the draft outline of Walker's deal with LVRN and Interscope stipulated that she would have received just $110,000 as an initial advance. The number increases for subsequent albums. The proposed royalty rate for her debut and its following up or its follow up, excuse me, was 16% meaning she would take home just 16 cents out of every dollar she generates once she has recouped her advance. Wow. 16 cents per dollar after the advance, after she makes the 110,000 back. Uh, 
Woo! Managers say these numbers are low by contemporary standards. So low by what the norm is. God, what's the norm? That's Jesus. They dropped lower starting at 15%. In the final deal, I didn't read this far yet, Walker ultimately signed in which she also gave up her masters. Wow. One progressive music company, Indify, does not even allow acts to sign royalty deals or give up ownership of their masters on their platform, believing that both practices are unfair to artists. Wow. Kudos to Indify. Ah, hence the name, Indify. Managers and lawyers alike were also troubled about the proposed options in the draft they reviewed, which would have committed Walker for however long it took LVRN to release up to four albums alongside a pair of pre-album projects. The signed deal lasted even longer. The option system means that if an artist is performing well, she is stuck abiding by terms that were settled on before she earned this increased leverage. This is a common feature of record deals and several managers said it's purely a boon for the label. The artist has virtually no protection and if she doesn't do well, the company can just drop her. Wow, I hadn't even read that last portion. Wow, she's a slave. So she's on stage. She's still dealing with heartbreak. She gets a little funky about it. Hey, you know what? I ain't about to do this for y'all. No way. You know, I'm, you know, this, this shit hurts, etc. Listen, you not the first artist, Miss Walker, or the last that has penned your pain in a song. You're, you'll never be as good as the greats that came before you, okay? The greats uh, that gave their lives in music, like your Michael Jacksons and your Whitney Houstons that laced more than their lives in the music. I mean, their music, they lived and breathed it. I mean, you can go back to Michael Jackson making a song like Ben as a kid. You know, where he's talking about his dead mouse that was a best friend. Like, these people from that time and from the 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 past, um, their musicianship just speaks to today. And today's artists are built on it. So, what makes you think that you're any different, I don't know. Um, but what I do know is that if your deal situation was better, you would probably be in a better place mentally and emotionally. Oh, by the way, record labels do not provide any kind of psychiatric uh, help or uh, benefits inside of these contracts. That's all left up to you. So great singer. I love the song. Uh, come through. Um, but very unfortunate to see that kind of unprofessionalism, but maybe just that quick glimpse into behind the back office of Summer Walker can kind of give you a little, you know, more understanding of her disposition. Um, regardless of which, no matter what's happening, you still got to be at your best. You still got to give your best and whenever you short the people, you ain't doing nothing but hurting yourself. You ain't doing nothing but looking like a shit bag. You ain't doing nothing but losing fans. I was listening to The Breakfast Club about this situation, and uh, Angela Yee went on to elaborate and say, you know, I've had this conversation with a few people, and, you know, um, and and, and uh, I believe Charlemagne ch he, he chimes in and he says, you know, uh, it's about preserving mental health and this and that. And I mean, hey, look at it like this. If the song hurt that bad, then don't put it out. But I guess when you sign a contract of slavery, you don't really have a choice. 
They gonna put out what the fuck they wanna put out. Not what you wanna put out. Yeah, it's part of the game that you playing. You rolling big dice. And when you rolling big dice with them labels that own you outright, you almost always lose. You're going against the house. And what do they say about the house? The house always wins. Man. Uh, prayers up to you, Miss Summer Walker. I'm sorry that the pain of uh, what you penned in that song still stings to this day. Um, why in the hell would you name your last two albums over it and still over it? I don't know. Uh, but I believe it's a little bit more than just that nigga that you're talking about. Um, at 16 cents per dollar that you make on everything you do, including acting, yeah, you probably feel like a mouse in a cage on a motherfucking hamster wheel, trapped. So take note, young artist. Um, dying to go sign a deal could be death itself. My name's Omega. Thank y'all for listening. God bless the girl. I hope she rectifies that issue. I hope she gets out of this contract. Jesus, uh, it's one of the worst that I've ever heard. I don't think she will. I don't think they'll let her go. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. All right? We need more people to come here and hear this kind of information and learn from what we give as I learn on a daily basis as an artist. All right? So it can stop people and prevent them from making terrible decisions like this young lady here has. Signing your life away, signing your masters away, signing away to the tune of 16 cents per dollar. Jeez, it's already bad enough that you got to get over a thousand streams to sell one album. Then you turn around and you give away um, 90, 84% of your earnings. Jesus. That's what that adds up to. 16 cent per dollar? Yeah, you're giving away 84% of what you make on, on every musical venture. And in her case, including acting. Damn, you can't even get an outlet and go acting, be in a little show or be on a little, you know, silver screen for a minute. They're going to they gonna take 84% of that. Wow. It's robbery. It's slavery. It's rape. They need to start a fucking Me Too movement for musicians. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. I'm out. I could go on about this all day because it hurts to see it. It, it, it really upsets me. And you know what? More artists are jumping over each other hand over fist to sign another contract today. It's crazy. All right? Thanks for tuning in. Omega Classic Records is the name and the page. The page and the name. Omega Nun Rhymes Greater. Appreciate you. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. 